a number of you were not here, and we certainly understand why. We spoke on the topic in Christ alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, a good topic that I, I wanted to cover. Of course, I follow the lectionary, and it was, it was good. Uh, Philippians 3, mm -hmm. verses 4b through 14. And um, I gave it, and as uh, some can probably, probably realize, after you give a sermon, you go back home, you think about it, um, and you so, say, you know, I could have brought this out, I could have brought that out, I could have brought the other thing out. Yeah. Of course, you can't bring everything okay. out yeah, at that time, <laughs> you know, you know um, hindsight, they say, is what, 2020. <laughs> so I decided, hey, I'm going to give a part two to that uh, title, uh, In Christ Alone. And I'm using the exact same scripture that I used last week, uh, Philippians 3, 4b through 14. And so let's go there and take a look at it, read it. And then maybe there's a few new pointers that I can bring out that I didn't bring out last, last week. Mm -hmm. Starting in uh, verse 4b of, first, uh, of Colossians, I'm sorry, Philippians. Yeah, I, don't know. I might have been saying Colossians, but I mm -hmm. meant Philippians. Philippians uh, 3, it says, if anyone, this is 4b, if anyone else thinks they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more circumcised, he says, on the eighth day of the people of Israel, uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regards to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, I persecuted the church. Yes. As for righteousness based on the law, I was faultless. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, but whatever were gains in my Gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Mm -hmm. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth mm -hmm. of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, mm -hmm. for whose sake I have lost all things. Yes. I consider them garbage mm -hmm. that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own mm -hmm. that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection yes. and participation in his suffering. Uh, becoming mm -hmm. like him in his death. And so uh, somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. And then verse four, 12, he goes on to say, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, Thank for your you, word. Lord. Thank you that your word is mm -hmm. so just jam-packed that we can learn even more. We pray that you would add to our understanding as we mm -hmm. cover this subject Thank today. You, in Jesus' name, yes. amen. Amen. Now, as I mentioned, as I considered that... Uh, topic last week. Mm -hmm. There's a few other things I think that I'd like to, to bring out. Uh, and the subject matter of this topic is Paul. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Paul mm -hmm. and God's call mm -hmm. on Paul mm -hmm. and Paul's life and his service mm -hmm. to God. Yes. What did God call Paul to do? Marsha? To take the gospel to the Gentiles. Ooh, child, you are on it. <laughs> you are on it. Yes. All right. Answer this question. 
What has God called you to do? <coughs> Brethren? We are all to do the same thing. We are to spread the word of God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. To believers as well as non-believers. That is, share. I'm finished. I'm finished. I think we can go home. I think we can go home now. <laughs> Recorded for, for just two minutes. <laughs> well, maybe I'll give you a little bit more. Just a, just a little bit more. Yes. God called Paul for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And he has called you and me yes. for a purpose. Yes, Lord. God knows you by name. Mm -hmm. He knows your name, Mr. Washington. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Yeah. He knows your name, Marlene. Amen. Yeah, Tim, God knows your name. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Victoria, God knows your name. Thank you, Lord. He knows your name. Mm -hmm. He called you to his way of life mm -hmm. for a purpose. Mm -hmm. God doesn't make any Amen. mistakes. Amen. Now, let's take a look at the life of Paul. Paul said in verse 4 of our text, if, if uh, someone else thinks that they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, mm -hmm. he says, I have more. Amen. We covered this last week. He says, I am of mm -hmm. the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Paul was a descendant of Abraham the father of the Jews mm -hmm. and the Israelite nation. Yes. He said, I was circumcised on the eighth day mm -hmm. as a baby boy. Yes. A stringent requirement of Jewish families. Mm -hmm. Some others were circumcised at other times, mm -hmm. but on the eighth day, this was a stringent requirement of Jewish families. Mm -hmm. He says, I was of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Of the twi 12 tribes, they were not one of the 10 tribes, uh, along with Judah, who rebelled after Israel came out of exile. Along with Judah, Benjamin returned to the motherland and formed the southern part of Israel. The other ten tribes became known as, you remember this, the lost ten tribes. Mm -hmm. Judah and Benjamin, they remained faithful. Mm -hmm. And he says, I was of that tribe that remained faithful. He says, of a Hebrew of Hebrews. Paul's parents were Jews. So uh, he was a pure stock, full-blooded, pure pedigree. Mm -hmm. His family maintained Hebrew customs and characteristics. Paul was also educated at the feet of Gamaliel, the most noted Jewish scholar of Paul's day. Paul was proficient in the Hebrew language and the Hebrew scriptures. He was serious. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the law, Paul says, I was a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. He scrupulously kept the law. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees kept their own set of laws, rules and regulations, mm -hmm. in addition to the laws mm -hmm. of Moses. Paul's credentials as a Jew were impeccable. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that much about many people. Mm -hmm. Impeccable. As for zealousness, I zealously persecuted the Christian church. Mm. Why did Paul persecute the Christian church? This was before God called him. Mm -hmm. Paul thought that Christianity was heretical and blasphemous. He felt that Christ had not met his, that is Paul's, 
or Saul at that time's expectations of what the Messiah would be like. Therefore, he assumed that Jesus' claims were false and therefore wicked. Also, uh, he felt that Christianity was a political menace because it threatened the, to disrupt the fragile relationship between the Jews and the Roman government. You Jews keep messing up, and you're going to mess up the government. They're going to come down hard on us. Paul was a zealot, as I mentioned, against Christianity. He was the ringleader who held the coats of those who stoned Stephen's. He was a conscientious, relentless, persistent persecutor of Christians, blameless. Paul observed the finest points of the law. He was blameless, faultless, and beyond reproach. He knew and practiced the rules of being a rabbi. Paul scored 100% in Judaism. Wow. But that was not what God wanted Paul to do. Yes. He's got all these credentials. Let's take a close look at what God wanted Paul to do. You know, uh, with all of the qualifications that Paul had, he could have been a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He was already a Pharisee, mm -hmm. top notch in the Jewish society, in the yeah. Jewish community. Mm -hmm. He was a rabbi, mm -hmm. top religious teacher of that day. Mm -hmm. He was perfect when it came to the finer points of the law. Yes. What more could you ask for of an individual? Mm -hmm. But that was not what God wanted Paul to do. Yes. Uh -huh. Turn to Acts, if you will. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. <clears throat> Excuse me. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found uh, any there who belonged to the way, the way is the way of God, whether man or woman, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he uh, neared Damascus yes. on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven sh shined around him. Mm -hmm. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, mm -hmm. why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Yeah. How did he know who the Lord was? Paul was, he wasn't a Christian. How, how did he know who the Lord was? Maybe it was just the power of God talking to him. After all, he had been knocked to the ground, and a man of his stature probably thought, hey, this has got to be the Lord. He's riding on a horse. This light, bright light, a light from heaven shines and knocks him to the ground. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Get up. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Go into the city of Damascus and you will be told what you must do. Drop down to verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim 
my name to the Gentiles, right, Marcia, and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. God said, verse 15 again, go to Ananias. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, to their kings, and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Drop down to Verse 19b. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who called on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests. Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by providing, uh, proving that Jesus is the Messiah, the very one that he was fighting for, just fighting against just a few weeks later. Turn to uh, Acts chapter 26. Verse 19 and 20. So then King Agrippa, I was, not I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in, that is the vision that he had from God, knocking him off of his horse. First, he says, I mean, to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, then to the Gentiles, I preach that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance for, uh, by their deeds. Wow, that's a message that he's telling them when he was teaching just a few weeks before, the very opposite. So soon after God called him, Paul was doing the work. Now, how long does it take you to do what God tells you to do? He tells you to do something, and so, okay, well, first, let me, let me meditate on it. <laughs> what's, what's that word? Uh, massage the thought. Uh, what, what's that word that I want? Uh, when you just let something brew, and it gets better and better as it brew. M massage, whatever it is. Uh, but, you know, it takes us some time to do what God wants us to do. Okay, we're in chapter 9. Let's go to, to verses 26 through 28 in Acts chapter 9. Verse 26 says, When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he already that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas, good old Barnabas, Barnabas the encourager, took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Paul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. Wow. But look at how quickly things moved. Go back, but well, we're in chapter 9. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 of Acts 9. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road 
as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. Mm -hmm. And he began, he could see again. Mm -hmm. He got up and was baptized. Mm -hmm. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Amen. Paul was dead serious mm -hmm. about his calling. Yes. So we see here that Paul found the purpose mm -hmm. that God had for him in life. Mm -hmm. And he pursued it mm -hmm. relentlessly. Now, I want to go back again and look at verses 15 and 16 of Acts 9. We're still in Acts 9, verses 15 and 16. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, mm -hmm. this man is my chosen instrument yes. to proclaim my name to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. to their kings, and to the people of Israel, mm -hmm. I will show him mm -hmm. how much he must suffer in my name. Mm -hmm. Notice, God did not tell Paul here what he wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. God told Ananias. Mm -hmm. God didn't ask Paul. Mm -hmm. God chose Paul. And God had already equipped Paul with everything he needed to do the job. God used the capabilities that Paul had to do the job that God wanted him to do. And notice, Paul didn't get the big head about his capabilities that he had. Paul said, all the capabilities I have, all the assets I possess, all my abilities are but garbage. Yes, amen. By comparison, when it comes to knowing Christ. Mm -hmm. It's in Christ alone mm -hmm. that I have any worth. Mm -hmm. Everything else I count as a loss. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's, that's some attitude to have. We get the big head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get a raise on the job. Mm -hmm. And boy, we get the big, I am somebody. Yes. Mm -hmm. We get a new car mm -hmm. or a house. Look, look at what neighborhood I live in. Mm -hmm. Did you see my car? It's shiny. Yes. Whew, I must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't say that mm -hmm. once. He just went after what he thought was right. He thought persecuting the Christians was right. He went after it with his whole heart. Yes. Brethren Art, you and I being all that Christ wants us to be, living up to the purpose that he has called us. And as I mentioned before, God doesn't make any mistakes. Amen. We must be pursuing that goal with all of our energy. Mm -hmm. We must pursue that goal like an athlete training for a gold medal in his profession. You know, these athletes, they train. That, that young girl, that gymnast, Simone, what is that her name? Simone? She is fabulous. A little short girl. She took off a couple years because she said she had to get her mind straight. She came back and she is she is amazing. We should let nothing distract us. 
Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Timothy 6. First Timothy 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Take hold of eternal life mm -hmm. to which you were called yeah. when you made your good confession mm -hmm. in the presence of many witnesses. Mm -hmm. Each one of us mm -hmm. was called to eternal life. Yes, amen. Thank you. <laughs> Brother Clarence Lawrence was called to eternal life. Mm -hmm. God said, soon will be the time. Mm -hmm. He's maybe still alive now. His daughter didn't think that he would last another day or two mm -hmm. in the hospital. Whenever. God knows the time. Amen. Yeah. We were all called to eternal life. Now, <laughs> are you going to be there? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be there? Mm -hmm. Eternal life. You know, we go through all our struggles in this physical life mm -hmm. of 80 or 90 years. Mm -hmm. But that held into insignificance all eternity. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it says, when you made your confession in the presence of many witnesses, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I remember it for myself. Mm -hmm. I was age 12. Mm -hmm. I was in the Baptist church. Mm -hmm. And I remember on that particular Sunday, I don't know what the minister was preaching about. I do not remember. But there was something that came over me that said, you know, I want to go up there and sit in that chair. So I look back, two rows back, because my mother was sitting back there. And I said, motion to her that I wanted to go up there. She said, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I walked up there and sit in that chair. Mm -hmm. As they said, they opened the doors of the church. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. And that's all I remember. But I know, I knew. that I wanted to go. Mm. That was an inspiration. Yes. yes. And it says, when you made your confession in the presence of many witnesses, mm -hmm. others saw me go up there. Yes. And each one of you made that decision. Mm -hmm. And others witnessed it. Yes. Amen. You have to remember that. Mm -hmm. Back to our text today, in Philippians 3, and I want to read verses 12 through 14 from the Living Bible. It says, I don't mean to say, this is Paul saying, I don't mean to say I am perfect. Mm -hmm. I haven't learned all that I should even yet, but I keep working toward mm -hmm. that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for Amen. and Thank wants me to be. Mm -hmm. No, dear brothers, I am still not all that I should be, but I am mm -hmm. bringing all my energies yes. to bear on this one thing, yes. forgetting the past mm -hmm. and looking forward to which lies ahead. Yes. I strain mm -hmm. to reach the end of the race mm -hmm and receive the prize for which God is calling us up to heaven because of what Christ Jesus did for us. Thank you, Lord. Mr. Lawrence is looking forward to that prize. Mm -hmm. That 
prize, that reward in heaven. I'm not saying that he's gone yet. He might have another week to another couple, three months. We don't know. But he is striving for that. And I've had a conversation with him uh, just um, six weeks ago. And I encouraged him. I said, Mr. Mr. Lawrence, you know, um, I have never seen you upset or angry at anybody. And we were talking to his daughter last night, and she says, well, you know, ever since I was little, he just was never mad at me. <laughs> Even with my math problems, I could get, he says, well, well, look, Amy, you need to look at it from this standpoint over here. And then she got it. Mm -hmm. She says, but my mom, you don't know the other side of her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, um, how? How do we strive for what Christ saved us for and what you are to be. I just got a, a, a few pointers here to ask, answer those questions. Number one, uh, and it's just a few pointers here. Ask God through prayer mm -hmm. to help you understand what he wants you to be. Specifically in, in prayer, Ask him to help you understand what he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Study his word. Mm -hmm. And there are several methods. Just reading through the Bible mm -hmm. is one way of studying his word. Mm -hmm. Devotionals are very good. Find a devotional that you like and a person that you like talking and follow them daily in that devotional. Mm -hmm. Studying different subjects throughout the Bible mm -hmm. to see what God says about a particular subject. Mm -hmm. Bible study groups. Mm -hmm. You don't have to study with us. Mm -hmm. You can get together with many other Bible study groups around the city mm -hmm. and they're studying God's Word. method that Marilyn used where she studied the whole Bible on a CD. Did you know that? No. You studied it on a CD. Anyway, let me finish my thought because she's objective. <laughs> she had a CD that she plugged into her the, the, her her uh, radio in her car. It was my car, my phone. Okay, your phone. Mm. My bad. Mm. My wow. Bible on my phone. Wow. The Bible on, my on your phone. phone. Yes. And when you got into your car. I turned my Bible on in my phone and I listened to it. So Amen. whenever she got into her car to drive, it, it popped up. Wow. And so while she was driving, she was listening to the Bible. And she, she picked a man who had a sexy voice. <laughs> a man who had a sexy voice. And she just liked it. And you can get all kinds of voices, you know. But every time she got into her car, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible was going, and the, how long did it take you, three months, four months? Oh, to finish the whole Bible? Yeah. Oh, no, it took me about a year. About a year? Mm -hmm. Okay. But she got through the whole Bible in a year just while she was driving. That's Amen. wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's a way of doing it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. A CD Thank like you. this. Wow. Oh, not a CD. Oh, okay. My bad again. I have a CD. 
I have my phone. She has her phone. <laughs> I thought she was using a CD. But whichever way, even my CD, which you can do the same thing. You plug it in and it plays. Yes. Well, she's using her phone. Okay, and it's playing the Bible. And this guy, he is every Ike he hits. He doesn't mispronounce anybody. And he keeps going. And if we read, you know, we stumble over these names and we stumble here and there. He does it. He reads it. And it goes through. And it's amazing Amen. how when it's read, you know, like that, you understand it. So that's another method. You have a guest coming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah, you got it. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Okay. Okay. Okay, here's another another thing. Use your abilities or talents to serve God's people. Amen. Oh, she wanted Michael. Uh -huh. Okay, here's another thing that you can do, and I'm just about finished here. Use your abilities or talents to serve God's people. Amen. And we have a lot of that here in our congregation. Mm -hmm. We have our champions. I'm amazed at how many good ideas Herb has. Mm -hmm. Herb has a lot of good ideas mm -hmm. that he presents to me. Amen. He runs them past me. Mm -hmm. And many of them I say, well, I think that's a good idea. It was his idea about priest. Pastor Appreciation. Amen. Now, not overall Pastor Appreciation, but he says, well, we're stumbling with when to have it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, just, just have it next week. Mm -hmm. But he, he's got some good ideas. Use your abilities or talents to serve God's people. And yeah. here's the last one. Stay in fellowship with God's people. Amen. God Amen. will not let you down mm -hmm. if you fellowship with those who love Him. Mm -hmm. Brethren, in doing these things, God will reveal to you, if He hasn't already, what He wants you to do, mm -hmm. what He has called you to do, mm -hmm. and then go after it with energy. Go after it mm -hmm. with energy. He is mm -hmm. always in your corner. Mm -hmm. He wants you to get into his corner. And he's going to bless you. Amen. He's going to bless you. Amen. Living in that purpose for your life will result in the prize for which God has called mm -hmm. us heavenward mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. Help us to hear, take heed, want to be all that we can be yes. for you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank, Thank you. you for your provisions Amen. to make it possible. We just have to want it. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.